Okay, good morning and welcome to this uh, last session on uh, the Acts of the Apostles and the Life of Paul. Uh, we will begin with a word of prayer. Asad Rupa, would you be able to lead us in prayer? Sure, ma'am. Yes. Father, we thank you. Bless your holy name this morning, Lord. Thank you for being with us in this journey of learning Acts and seeing your manifestation of your power and your glory and the way you have empowered your servants to carry on the gospel, Lord. We thank and praise you. Thank you for bringing to us the life of Paul and giving us the grace to learn so many important lessons from his life and his missionary journeys, Lord. Thank you for, Father, our uh, ma'am, Nancy, ma'am, for being with her and empowering her to teach us, Lord God. Be with us in this last class as we meditate on your word, learn from your word, Father. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rupa. So uh, as we've been uh, reading about the trial of Apostle Paul, we note that he stood before uh, two governors in uh, Caesarea, and uh, uh, one of them did not really make a decision. He made a decision in the favor of the Jews, which is why he kept uh, Paul in prison that would be governed Felix. And then he handed on the responsibility to Festus. Now, Festus uh, being a uh, more, you could say, righteous in terms of wanting to make a fast decision. Uh, he did whatever he could to get a reason uh, to, to you know, take this case forward. However, uh, Paul appealed to go to Caesar, and which is why uh, uh, Festus could not really make a decision on this, uh, but he was ready to send Paul to Rome. However, he did need to produce at least a letter which had some content in it to describe the, uh, you know, the, the uh, condition and the prospects and uh, uh, something about Paul and the reason why he is under custody. Uh, and so uh, what Festus thought is he thought that he would have this case examined or at least heard out by uh, King Agrippa. And uh, so King Agrippa and uh, you know his uh, his uh, wife or the person that he was living with at that time. So she comes in. They have this entire ceremony with pomp and glory. And Paul presents uh, his defense. He narrates his life story and what exactly happened and how he has been obedient to the call that God has given. Now, beyond this, we uh, will see what exactly happens. So instead of reading the entire narrative, you know, we could read the entire narrative. Uh, but I thought for uh, the lack of time, in a sense, uh, and also the fact that the, the chapter that proceeds is more of a uh, journey. So uh, it, it is quite all right, you know, if we uh, skip all the minor details there. Uh, but then uh, I would like to show you a map which sort of captures the entire journey. Now, as I told us earlier, uh, Paul was in Caesarea for two years, and then you know, he uh, is sent across to Rome to go and uh, meet Caesar. So that is when you know he makes this journey. So Festus sends him along with a centurion, and it is likely that he traveled on a, a ship that took many other prisoners, uh, you know, uh, uh, en route to to Rome and you know wherever else they needed to go. So uh, this was from. Acts 27, you know, the entire chapter of Acts 27 is a journey, a ship journey that uh, we would be looking at. So we would see that uh, initially they proceed uh, in favorable weather, uh, but then Paul predicts that it, things are not going to turn out uh, all that 
well for the crew which is traveling and uh, rightly so they encounter rough weather and you know, they uh, they end up you know trying to uh, maneuver the ship and so uh, acts 27 is a description of uh, this unfavorable weather and how they actually set sail amidst this kind of an opposing environment so here is the map for us and i, I really hope you are able to see it uh, is is it uh, visible Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sister. So, as we can see here, I've tried to enlarge uh, the image as much as possible. Okay, so here we are. We said that, uh, uh, you know, uh, in Acts 21, when Paul was caught in Jerusalem, you know, uh, we, the whole uh, a conspiracy against him, and the opposition arose, uh, and then for his safety, via Antipatris, he was transported to Caesarea. Uh, he sat there for two years uh, under the imposition of uh, Felix, uh, and then of course Festus came and the appeal to go to Caesar, and finally, you know, Paul is on his way to Rome. So. Here is the route which uh, Acts 27 covers. He moves from Caesarea to Sidon, and from there, uh, you know, around Cyprus, he travels to Myra. So when we are saying he travels, he is still under the care of the centurion. Let's not forget that. So you know, he is being taken as a, a person who is. Uh, to be, he he's under trial basically. So he has uh, people who are guarding him. So he goes to Myra. From there, uh, you see the route, you know, uh, around Nidus, and they finally come here to Salmon, and then you know, uh, Crete. So Fair Heavens is uh, a place from where they uh, board another ship it's an alexandrian ship uh, which they uh, board and from there they begin to move towards rome so as they move towards rome see so far everything seemed okay it's kind of going the way they liked it but here after fair heavens is where a storm affects the ship so uh, storms cause ship to lose control and wander sea for two weeks. So a good 14 days, they're on the ship, they're afraid. Uh, and in fact, you know, as we read, Paul uh, told us that Paul already predicted that this is not going to end in a good manner. And there are more than 200 odd people on the ship you know, who are traveling. And so in, in fear uh, uh, to up to 14 days, people did not even eat on the ship. So the situation was that bad, uh, you know, facing all these stormy winds. Uh, and, uh, you know, in Acts 27, you could read the description of how they exactly tried to maneuver. So why the situation was bad, you know, again, God uh, encounters Paul and uh, he assures him that people are, you know, that their life will not be lost you know, on the ship. So that's again a prophetic assurance which God gives Paul or the way he has been doing uh, to Paul earlier. Remember in Corinth, he said there are many other people who are uh, whom I have in this place just like you. So there was an encouragement. You know, again, God spoke to Paul and he said, look, I am with you. Don't be afraid. So God's reassurance to Paul once again is that People are not going to lose their lives. That this, uh, though the ship will be wrecked, people's lives are going to be saved. So, uh, when the soldiers, you know, the soldiers, they kind of, uh, they begin to panic. They have uh, several prisoners with them. I told you that uh, there are many prisoners on this particular ship. So, looking at the fact that the ship may uh, actually uh, get destroyed you know at some point people start jumping off the ship Paul advises them and he tells them like don't do that you don't have to do that uh, uh, just stay on the ship because none of the lives are going to be lost and so 
they listen to Paul, and somehow, you know, they uh, the people who are maneuvering the ship, they are able to, you could say, crash land, right? Crash land uh, in a sort of a safe way. So the ship did not survive, but the people survived. So land on this particular island known as Malta. So they uh, end up uh, being here for uh, a long while, and uh, then you read you know, uh, the fact that uh, they they were uh, they visited the the place of uh, a leader of this uh, town called Malta, where uh, he, they ministered. You know, Paul ministered to somebody who was sick. So what exactly happens on this uh, island of Malta? You know, two uh, incidents read. One is this is Acts 28. Uh, so we read that uh, as soon as they go on to this island, they, you know, they uh, make a fire just to host, you know, Paul and many other people who have just uh, crash landed from this ship. Uh, and so they make this fire. But unfortunately, uh, you know, there is a viper that comes out of this, this uh, 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 the stack of uh, wood there, and it uh, uh, bites, okay, bites or stings. What do you say for uh, snakes? Uh, so it uh, uh, bites the uh, Paul, and apparently on that island, uh, whoever was bitten by the snake would die. Right, so it's such poisonous viper uh, but somehow you know paul is able to shake it off shake off the viper and nothing happens to him right so uh, when we see this incident it's amazing for us it's amazing but it's even more amazing for the people of malta because they know what can transpire if a a, a, a if viper uh, you know, touches you, let alone, you know, does anything more than that. So they notice that nothing happened to Paul. So initially, they complain about Paul being a uh, guilty man, which is why, even though, uh, in their understanding, destiny had uh, been favorable, destiny had smiled on Paul, uh, that though storm really had to destroy Paul's life, he somehow escaped the storm. Okay, So they were saying that, look, God has been gracious to you, Paul. You know, uh, 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 the goodness of whatever, the universe or destiny, uh, that's, that's uh, shown upon you. But you are certainly guilty because, <laughs> excuse me, after having escaped uh, you know, such a major destruction. You are now uh, encountering a viper. Okay, so destiny has it that you need to die. Please excuse me. I'll just uh, maybe drink some water. Yes, so uh, that is how they are viewing it, that this man has really got to be guilty for, in their understanding, the gods to get him a second time. And so they would have um, uh, uh, fearfully, but they would have known in their minds that surely this man is going to die. So they fearfully waited for this man to uh, fall dead before their eyes. But he didn't. Once he shook off the viper, nothing happened to Paul, right? Absolutely nothing happened to Paul. And so this incident made them realize that Paul is probably a very good man. You know, he's a very noble man. He's a man who has incredible favor uh, with God. Uh, and uh, no wonder he escaped such a poisonous wipe. So you look at the uh, observation of people and uh, the way people respond, right? Public opinion, 
we, we call it. And we've seen this earlier as well in the life of Paul in Lystra, when uh, once people were saying, you know, you are the gods, the Greek gods, uh, Hermes and Zeus, but uh, eventually, when they find that Paul and Barnabas uh, are, are not, uh, you know, they they don't want to uh, condone the kind of worship that's taking place in Lystra, uh, they come up with all kinds of accusations and there is a mob uprising uh, against Paul and Barnabas in Lystra. So people can shift their opinions. The public opinion about us can change at any given point in time. So we must not rely on that. And even here in Malta, when this whole wipe situation happened, uh, that is what happened to Paul. But thank God for Paul's uh, anchor in who he was in Christ. And so he was not shaken you know, by the opinions of the people. And so this was one incident that took on the island of Malta and the other incident that took place as I mentioned earlier uh, they went to the house of uh, uh, Publius or Publius however you want to pronounce uh, uh, this the uh, pronoun so he was one of the leaders in that island uh, and uh, his uh, father was sick so when Paul went there he uh, rebuked the fever and the fever actually left this uh, man and so again you know, Paul was held in high regard uh, in this island of Malta. So uh, the beauty is that wherever Paul goes one is because of the call of God on his life but the other thing is that because of his own passion to share the love of Christ, his own passion to demonstrate the power and the glory of God. You find him doing work of the ministry everywhere, everywhere. So, you know, crash uh, being on the sea, he is being a prophetic uh, a minister guiding uh, a ship which is going to wreck. You know, how do you maneuver such a ship? He's hearing from God, he's guiding the people. Even after, the whole ship incident on Malta. There is more ministry for Paul. So praise God, you know, as a prisoner, even as a prisoner, uh, there was so much for Paul to actually do. So that is how, uh, you know, Acts uh, 27 uh, ends. And then you begin to see in Acts 28 uh, that Paul eventually reaches he uh, reaches Rome and over there he comes under the charge of uh, the uh, Roman authorities and uh, they say, okay, Paul, you know, we need you to uh, provide a defense. We've heard so much about you, but you know, we need to find out what the matter of this case is. And in fact, you know, I did mention to us earlier that uh, Agrippa, you know, one of the things that Agrippa says after having heard uh, Paul's defense is that this man could have been set free. Okay, this man could have been set free uh, had he not appealed to Caesar. So let me see if I can find that uh, verse for us. So Paul's innocence is. Uh, proved over and over again okay so this acts uh, 26 and verse 32 where agrippa mentioned this to festus he said this man might have been set free if he had not appealed to caesar so you know he's there his essence was uh, very clear however you know uh, knowing that paul was called to serve the Lord and the people who were uh, against him, he had gone through so many things uh, uh, through his life, in his life. And uh, he faced opposition, he faced uh, even natural challenges like we saw the tempest that took place in Acts 27 uh, and his whole time in the island of Malta and many things. Uh, 
but you know his struggle continued in Rome. So, in Acts 28, after the arrival of uh, uh, Paul in Rome, uh, what we notice is they want to hear from Paul okay, uh, what really he wants to say about this entire situation. So, in the meantime, what they do is they put him up in a particular place. So, this uh, kind of imprisonment which he had in Rome, the first imprisonment was a you could say something like a home imprisonment where there were soldiers. Okay, there were soldiers, and uh, apparently, the way the soldiers used to uh, 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 watch a Paul was uh, they were even tied to Paul. So, you know, there was one uh, handcuff on uh, uh, Paul, and the other was on the soldier. So, he was guarded in that fashion, he was under. Uh, uh, you know, uh, complete view of soldiers, uh, but they gave him freedom. So in this home imprisonment, they allowed anyone and everyone to actually visit uh, uh, Paul. And they said, okay, anyone can visit you, anyone can uh, uh, come and meet you, you can do whatever you want, just that under our custody. So. He read that he continued his ministry in Rome. Okay, Rome was one place that he wanted to visit uh, a long time ago, but he was not able to visit. And he already knew that there was a beautiful, thriving, believing congregation which was in uh, Rome. Uh, and it was his heart's desire to actually meet them. But this time around, you know, though uh, under unfortunate circumstances, he made it to Rome and he had the freedom to minister to people. So, you know, in God's own uh, way and in God's grace, uh, Paul again continued the work of the ministry in Rome. Uh, another beautiful thing that, uh, you know, it, it speaks to me is uh, the fact that Paul taught. Okay, let me just come to that. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, verse 23 of Acts 28. Okay, uh, if you're there, uh, would anyone be able to read Acts 28 and verse 23? So, this is uh, Paul under home imprisonment in Rome. Either Abhishek or maybe. Christopher, you're okay to read it. One was uh, 20, 20 verse 28 and uh, 28. 20. Yeah, verse 23. Okay. So when yeah. they appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God and persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophet from morning till evening. Yes, thank you, Abhishek. So, you know, it really uh, makes one wonder. Uh, I stated that wherever he went, you know, he was a carrier of uh, God's presence. He was passionate about uh, sharing the gospel. Sometimes we, we have a mindset where we step into ministry, we step out of ministry, uh, but what do you do when somebody is living for the cause at all times? You know, and Paul is one such individual where there's no stepping in, stepping out. Every moment is an opportunity and he makes use of it. So we've seen that being under the governors was an opportunity to minister to, uh, you know, the uh, high authorities of his days and talk about Jesus with them. Now, we don't know how many people he spoke to while on the ship, while on this uh, voyage, you know, from Caesarea to Rome, which some people call as the fourth missionary journey. But I'm sure he would have, you know, 
shared uh, the gospel he would have equipped people in the in the teachings of the kingdom of god uh, uh, we don't know how many disciples came out of that ship how many people planted churches we don't know but the reality is that the ministry went on and on and on uh, even on island of malta then he come to rome and here we are reading in uh, acts 28 verse 23 uh, so when they had appointed him a day many came to him at his lodging whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of god okay that is understandable so he was there since permission was given for people to visit him he continued you know uh, explaining things to them teaching them about the kingdom of god testifying about it persuading them concerning jesus from both the law of moses and the prophets but notice it also says from morning till evening okay do we recall where else he did something like this long summit uh, he did this in uh, what was that place uh, was it uh, tyre where uh, eutychus he, he fell did it fell uh, and he actually died so i hope i'm getting the name of the place right uh, anyhow you know, there was a place where a gentleman even fell because paul had so much to share now when one is under imprisonment and they are teaching from morning to evening think about it how full one heart must be with the word of god to be able to impart it you know, uh, in in this continual manner even in ephesus two years he was in ephesus school of tyrannus he ministered every given opportunity how much he could teach the people how much he could equip the people he was pouring into the lives of others and uh, it is really so beautiful to see that one can be passionate you know this is like revival that's why sometimes we uh, look at the life of paul and look at paul and say he was a carrier of revival wherever he went you know there was this fire burning in him which never uh, mellowed down in any way he was on fire uh, he he did his work you know with with great vigor great zeal and zest uh, even under imprisonment in rome it's quite scary you know to to think what might happen to uh, paul if he were to get convicted but you know putting those thoughts aside he looked at the given circumstances as a opportunity and he is teaching the people from morning till evening okay so uh, incredible incredible to know that someone sowed into the kingdom the way paul did and many lessons to learn from the life of paul uh, and over here uh, verse 30 can i request uh, either abhishek or christopher please read verse 30 of acts 28 mm. Yes, again. Uh, then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house, and received all who came to him. Okay, so it gives us a uh, no a timeline. So how long did he say the stay in room in this house? It says house, but we know that it was basically. Uh, a house imprisonment he couldn't travel out uh, of rome so for two years so he was in zeria for two years and now he is in uh, rome for two years so so far we have seen uh, the birth of the church we have seen the impact of the church we've seen the raising up of leaders we've seen uh, the uh, raising up of a very notable uh, leader in the life of the church by the name of apostle paul and the journey he makes from the time he encounters uh, the lord jesus on the road to damascus all the way you know, till uh, he he actually reaches rome and 
from Damascus to Rome, as shared in the book of Acts. So Luke covers uh, the encounter, and then he covers, he doesn't talk too much about the preparatory years of uh, Paul's life, but he does begin to talk about his ministry in Antioch. You know, once Barnabas brings him to Antioch, and then three missionary journeys, three missionary, wonderful missionary journeys uh, filled with great uh, uh, enthusiasm to serve the Lord, filled with uh, uh, much hard work. We, we know wherever Paul could do his tent making, he did that. Wherever he could uh, uh, just focus and do his teaching, he did that. He imparted everything he he uh, you know knew uh, as essential for for the believers of each place so he went uh, from one place to the other and three missionary journeys you know he he um, brought several people to the lord and you know uh, many churches were also planted and not only that as part of the missionary journeys we saw him going back to some of those old church plants and uh, strengthening them once again all this uh, with a sense of accountability to other other uh, leaders of the church we see paul he didn't do things in a in a very uh, you know, I am great and I know it all sort of manner. But he was answerable to his own leaders back at Antioch. He was reporting uh, matters to his leaders in Antioch. He was in touch with, uh, you know, uh, uh, the leaders of Jerusalem. When I say in touch, we know that he did not really have many days to spend in Jerusalem. But uh, he had a sense of honor. For the leaders of Jerusalem, and wherever required, you know, he did uh, uh, interact or take counsel. We know about Acts 15, where the matter was escalated to the leadership of Jerusalem. So, you know, he did things with a sense of uh, uh, accountability, a sense of uh, uh, friendship and kingdom mentality. With, with the leaders, and not just the leaders. When we read the epistles of Paul, we see how he credits so many different leaders. But you know, as far as Paul's ministry in their lives is concerned, he nurtured them from a place of being a believer to a leader. You know, how beautiful. Then he had privilege to call them leaders and credit them as leaders. So uh, such was the ministry of Apostle Paul. So he raised up churches with uh, incredible fire. The same kind of fire and zeal which he carried was imparted to these churches. And even up until the, the uh, last portion of the book of Acts, which is uh, his travel to Rome or the voyage to Rome, sometimes considered as the fourth missionary journey and his first imprisonment. Okay, I'm saying first imprisonment because uh, history has it that he underwent a second imprisonment as well. And he was likely martyred somewhere around uh, uh, 64 AD or so. Uh, and, you know, it said that uh, he uh, or, or, you know, 64, there is a, again a, a timeline, the exact time uh, people speculated. So, 68 AD, you know, 68 AD, as far as we, our timelines, which we have put down is concerned, we say 68 AD uh, is around the time when he was under the second Roman imprisonment and died. How did Paul die? Was he finally convicted? So, we don't have. Uh, details from the Gospels or, uh, oh, sorry, I mean to say the New Testament books to say that uh, it was conviction you know, that caused Paul's uh, uh, execution. He was beheaded. Uh, it is likely that under the rule of Emperor Nero, persecution of uh, uh, Christians, right, it was quite rampant. Uh, all Christians, if anyone believed in Christ, they were being persecuted. So it's likely that Paul 
came under that persecution and not necessarily as oh he he spoke against the jews or he spoke against the roman empire and killed him you know it may not have happened like that so not through a conviction but more like it was a season of persecution the many were being killed and so paul was also killed and it is said that he was beheaded he was not uh, necessarily tortured many other ways which uh, you know other christians of his time uh, faced simply because he was roman so uh, being a roman citizen had its privileges and he, they could not be uh, ill treated in several other ways so he, he he would have just been uh, executed through uh, beheading and uh, this is right after the uh, second imprisonment so that about the life of paul uh, i know that's a lot for us to actually uh, uh, take in uh, but then let me quickly uh, summarize okay a few more uh, timelines just so uh, we clear about how the book of acts and paul's life you know uh is as far as the years are concerned so let me also show for us a map here uh, or a document which are you all doing okay what it like Too much information or bearable in one session. I would have loved for this to take a couple of sessions, but I just squeezed it in. Is that fine? Yes, first. Okay. All right. Now, thank you. Okay. So I hope you can see. So I've just put this uh, together for clarity. okay because i know different dates and, uh, we mentioned a lot of these details about first missionary journey second missionary journey all that just so we can capture it in a proper manner uh, i'll uh, read out you know timelines uh, and you can also see it so that way it will register with you uh, and there will be clarity so i've compiled this from our apc publication revivals visitations and moves of god uh, we saw the initial years of the birth of the church so acts chapter 2 to acts chapter 8 uh, you know from the moment that the holy spirit is poured out on the 120 believers in the upper room to the time when phil goes and ministers in samaria right so that is about 8 years so 30 to 38 ad okay and what we see is the question that i asked us in the assignment where we talk about excuse me the birth of the early church and the impact of the early church so we could even say that it is a seed or a picture of a church in revival because people were coming to know jesus in large numbers the supernatural works of god were taking place revival fires were spreading across you know the just the way in acts 1:8 uh, uh, jesus had said in jerusalem judea samaria to the ends of the earth so it had started the fire had started spreading out now acts 8 acts 13 or you know acts 9 you may want to say uh, is the next set of years so it's about uh, 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 roughly about you know 9 years Uh, again so over here what we see happening is the encounter of paul on the road to damascus and uh, the birth of the antioch church which is very special uh, church for us you know in this context uh, and how 
you know, God calls out Barnabas and Paul for the work of the ministry. So, you know, all this happens. So at the time when uh, Paul was called God, he would have been somewhere between the ages of 29 to 33 years. Okay, so beyond you know, Acts 13, where the missionary journeys actually start, would from there to the end of the book of Acts, uh, you know, looking at a period of about 20 years. Okay, so what is going on in these 20 years? Uh, we see that you know, Paul makes his first missionary journey. So Acts uh, AD 44 to AD 46 would be the first missionary journey. That's about two years. Second missionary journey is AD 49 to uh, AD 52. Uh, that is, you know, three years. Actually, you know, so we also sometimes say three to four years. It could have been. So that's roughly about the time. And over here, in the second missionary journey, we uh, looked at many points of emphasis. But one key thing that we can remember is he probably wrote the uh, epistles first and second Thessalonians epistle is letters of Paul epistles so first and second Thessalonians so he wrote it in the second missionary journey third missionary journey of Paul between 53 to 58 uh, AD uh, over four years uh, here again we, we know that he spent three years in uh, Ephesus he wrote Galatians and 1st Corinthians. From Macedonia, he wrote 2nd Corinthians. From Greece, he wrote the letter to the Romans. Remember, I mentioned that he really wanted to go to the Romans, but he couldn't. Uh, so he had written a letter earlier before he actually physically visited uh, Rome. So these are the epistles which he wrote during his the missionary journey. Okay. <laughs> I just uh, correct myself. I think I'm being confused. Second missionary journey is three years. Over four years is the third missionary journey. Okay, because uh, that's where he is in Ephesus and he does his teaching. Okay, uh, so you can go by uh, what you are seeing here in the timelines, and I will also post this on your stream page so then you can hold on to uh, the timelines here. All right, so the third missionary journey, then imprisonment uh, in Caesarea for two years, AD 58 to 60. Then uh, he journeys to Rome, and uh, you know, he is under Roman imprisonment. So Roman imprisonment, he writes the letters Colossians, Philemon, Ephesians, and Philippians. So these letters are known as prison epistles. Okay, prison episode, so you can make note of that. Uh, and finally, you know, we know that after this uh, prison imprisonment in Rome, he was released for a period of time where he wrote First Timothy and Titus. Uh, now, we don't know, we are not sure whether Paul wrote uh, uh, the book of Hebrews or not, but there is speculation that may be he wrote that book. So, uh, if you include the book of Hebrews, uh, it'd be a total of 14 epistles to Paul, attributed to Paul. But uh, since we are not sure, and there is a whole lot of debate about who wrote Hebrews, we generally say 13 is uh, what is confirmed to be written by so he wrote First Timothy and Titus during his period of release after his first imprisonment. Uh, and then you know, during the second imprisonment, he wrote Second Timothy. Okay, he uh, wrote Second Timothy. Sorry, and that's where you know you have that verse, you know, I fought the good fight, I've kept faith. Uh, uh, and so he had done his job. He had done his best. Uh, and he knew that this time was coming. Uh, and certainly so. You know, Paul uh, was executed in AD 68. Uh, and, you know, 
uh, he had a, a beautiful, uh, let's say, 20 to 24 uh, years of ministry that that uh, uh, he served so passionately. And uh, he is a great and a wonderful testimony for uh, many of us you know, believers. Not that we want to put him on a pedestal, but just to applaud uh, any child of God who has uh, really stuck to their call and carried the revival fire uh, that you know God put on the inside of him. So you know, we see that Paul would have traveled at least 49 cities. People say he traveled more than 49 cities, but yeah, at least 49 cities during his journey. I know he, he met uh, thousands of uh, people, raised up you know, hundreds of uh, leaders. Uh, we we don't even know how many thriving churches were there during his time because you know, obviously with hundreds of leaders uh, there must have been hundreds of churches that were uh, directly or indirectly raised up by apostle paul so you know such was his ministry uh, such was his impact so uh, the book of acts you know sheds great light on uh, uh, the way one can follow up on the calling of God on their lives. Uh, and, you know, as I stated in our very introductory class about the Book of Acts, I want to mention that it ends very abruptly. As I told us, you know, the first imprisonment is uh, what is recorded. And we don't know why he looked incomplete content regarding the release of Paul, content regarding the second imprisonment of Paul. You know, he never really uh, published that. But though there is an abrupt ending to the book of Acts, one thing we know, you know the revival fire of God carries on. Paul has come and gone. Many of the men and women of God we see in the book of Acts, they have come and gone. But the work of God continues. The work of his Holy Spirit continues and it continues in our lives. So, you know, we must keep the fire burning. We must keep uh, carrying these Bible fires wherever the Lord sends us. So with that, I would like to, uh, you know, call this a wrap for the book of Acts. And really want to thank you for your patience and thank you for uh, uh you know journeying along uh, uh if there are portions where you know maybe i have been a little unclear i hope uh posting out uh, this particular timeline sheet will help you uh, but thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate each one of you uh, for your desire to learn uh, and your perseverance uh, because I know this is the third year batch now. So all of you uh, on this course, the uh, not the Elon students, but uh, because I know some of you are just taking the, the uh, ACTS course, but the, the students who are part of the online batch i know that all of you are in your third year and i uh, really appreciate you for uh, staying on course and coming so far uh, and uh, truly you know this uh, journey is going to be a blessing to you and you will be a blessing to many people so god bless you uh, any any uh, uh, anything to share if there is please feel free uh, we will pray right after that and close off okay thank you for your comments i see it there yeah thank you and uh, god bless you all too uh, so just uh, pray uh, let me pray you know, as we end this uh, course heavenly father we thank you lord for the grace that you've given us to uh, uh, read understand God and receive from the book of Acts. Lord, we pray that whatever we have learned, Father God, uh, whatever has been imparted to us, Lord, that uh, it will strengthen us in our spiritual walk with you. Father God, we pray that, uh, Lord, you will help us fan into flame, Father God. Uh, that same passion, that same desire, oh God, that we see in the book of Acts, Father. Lord, we know 
the work that you have done through uh, one person and uh, people who were called, oh God, in the early church. Lord, you have not stopped doing it today, Lord. So, Father, we just offer our lives, uh, Lord, as a uh, uh, a sacrifice to you, Lord. Father, we just uh, offer our lives, God, as uh, a submitted offering to you, Lord. We consecrate ourselves, Lord. And Father, uh, it is our cry that, Lord, you would continue to, to uh, help us be those carriers of revival, God. Lord, we believe, even as we, ha we have meditated on the book of Acts, Lord, that uh, uh, that fire of the Holy Spirit is burning in us, Lord, and and that Lord, we will be able to release the work of the Spirit, Lord, into the lives of many, many people. And Lord, I just speak a blessing over every student who has gone through this course, who has gone through even a session, a part of the session, Lord. We pray that Lord, uh, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit will touch and transform their lives, God. We praise you, we worship and honor you, Lord, for who you are and, and the way you work, Lord, in the lives of your people. We give you glory, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for connecting on this class. God bless you. Uh, we won't be having uh, uh, an additional session, so uh, carry on you might have assignments to do so thank you thank you pastor thank you bye bye shake thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much sister thank you bye